So what's up guys, it's Ash here and welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video guys, I've got some custom tactics and player instructions for the 4-2-3-1 formation. Hopefully this helps you guys get some wins in foot champions so you can get the best rewards possible. It's team of the season, so if you guys need any coins, make sure you check out MMOXP.com. Their link is down in the description. They're fast, cheap and reliable. And if you use my code REMA, you can get yourself a nice 5% discount. All right then guys, so starting off with the custom tactics, for the defensive style, I like to have this on balance. Now, the reason we have this on balance is because it gives us the greatest control over our defenders. So when we need to press, we're able to press. And then when we want to be a bit more passive and drop back, we're also able to do that. So by having this on balance, we do have the best control over our defenders. Moving on to the width, guys, I like to have this on 35. The reason for this is so we can primarily defend in a nice, narrow and compact shape, which means we're going to be able to block all those attacks through the middle uh, it's very important to maintain a bit of width though we don't want to have this too low uh, otherwise we're not going to be able to cover the wider areas in case an opponent tries an attack down the wing so we want it to be narrow but not too narrow now moving on to the depth guys I like to have this on 60 this is because it's a really nice balanced depth what you'll find is if you have your depth too low you'll find yourself getting pinned back all the time and you'll be under constant pressure which you don't want and on the flip side if you have it too high then one through ball will absolutely destroy you so I suggest going for something in between where it's neither too high or too deep uh, as it is very nice and balanced moving on to build up play guys I like to have this on balance this is because it's by far the most consistent and varied form of build up when you want to play quickly you're able to play quickly and then when you want to play a bit slower you're also able to do that so you are able to have much more varied build up which other settings would not give you for example if you use fast build up you're always going to have to play quickly if you use slow build up you're always going to have to play slowly but with balance you can pick and choose uh, when you want to play quick and when you want to play slow moving on to chance creation guys i suggest using direct passing this is because it's by far the most meta option in the game basically your attacking players will bunch up against the defenders so you can do the very overpowered one versus one isolation plays uh, which is very good for creating chances players also make those extra movements in the box so you can get off that extra pass to guarantee the goals in my opinion opinion direct passing is the most important tactic of them all now moving on to the width guys i like to have this on 46 not really a specific number you need to use i kind of picked this one at random but i kind of liked it uh the reasoning for why it's on 46 is because if you have the width too low in the 4231 it can feel like your players are sat on top of each other which is not really a good thing it's very difficult to actually get anything going and then if you have the width too high then it feels like a 4231 wide which we don't want either so i kind of just went for something in between like you know 46 you can kind of go anywhere from i'd say like 40 to 50 if you want but obviously the higher you go with the width uh the more the the wider your team's going to be sorry i got stuck on my words there but yeah we use this on 46 moving on to players in box guys i have this on four this is so we can get a few players into the box but we don't overcommit everybody so if we lose out on possession we're not always going to get counter attacked which is super useful so we can still create a lot of chances but we don't overcommit commit the entire team as for corners and free kicks i have these both on one because there is a set piece routine that i use which requires these to be on one there is a link to that in the top right hand corner of the screen if you are interested now moving on to the plays you want to use guys i'm just going to give some suggestions for each position you know the kind of thing you should be aiming for because i often get comments asking you know which type of players should i use in which formation so i'm just going to give you some like what i would say guidelines for each position so you guys know what you can aim for if you like obviously this is just a suggestion you don't have to if you don't want to but starting off with the striker I like to go for like a nice well-rounded player this is somebody that can do a bit of everything this is because it's obviously a one striker formation and where you could get the balance between two strikers in a two striker formation you have to get that all in one player in a one striker formation so I suggest going for a nice well-rounded striker somebody that can pass shoot on either foot somebody that can obviously dribble has a bit of pace very important to get a nice well-rounded player as they have to do like the job that two strikers would do if that makes sense uh, but yeah if you use like a one-dimensional player like a Holland or Kane you're always going to be restricted and I don't really suggest it in this formation moving on to the cam guys you can pretty much use whoever you want but just make sure that they have good creative ability because the cam is the main playmaker in this formation so it is important that you use somebody that is competent somebody that can pass and shoot uh, it's not super important that they have ridiculous pace but obviously it is an added bonus you're not going to want to use a clunky player with no creative ability so just 
just make sure you've got a cam that you're comfortable with. Moving on to the RAM and the LAM, the, la uh, the left cam and the right cam, whatever you want to call them, I suggest using wingers. These are obviously players with very good pace, really good dribbling, uh, even like five star skill moves if you can get it. Somebody that can even finish off a chance as well. Basically, just use really good wingers because these are like the main outlets in the team. It is important that they have uh, good pace and are obviously able to take on a player. Otherwise, you might find this formation to be a little bit crappy. Moving on to the left CDM, I like to use a more defensive minded player. This is somebody that's going to stay back, break up the play and ensure that we're as good defensively as we possibly can be. So I would suggest somebody with a medium high work rate if you can get it as you get the maximum contribution in defense and then not too bothered about going forward. Moving on to the right CDM, I like to use a more box to box style player. This is somebody that is going to attack and defend. So I would suggest somebody with a high, high work rate if you can get it as you get the maximum contributions in both attack and defense. But honestly, just ensure that this player is a nice well-rounded card so that they can do a bit of everything. Now moving on to the left back, I use a more attacking minded fullback here. This is somebody that's actually going to contribute on the attack, join us and obviously add extra width for us. But we'll get to that on the uh, in the player instructions. So I like to go for like a more attacking fullback in the left back position. And then in the right back position, I go for a more defensive player, somebody that is going to stay back and bring balance to the back four because we don't want to have like two uh, overly attacking fullbacks. Otherwise, it's obviously quite imbalanced. So I like to go for one attacking fullback and one defensive fullback fullback. Uh, as for the centre backs and the keeper, these just need to be the meta players. There's not too much to say about them. Now moving on to the player instructions guys on the striker. I like to have him on stay central and mixed attack. The reason we have him on stay central is because obviously since he's our only striker, we don't want him drifting off into the wider areas. We always need him to be in the correct position so we can always do what he's supposed to do. We don't really want him hugging the sidelines and getting drifting out wide. Uh, otherwise he's not going to do his job. We also have him on mixed attack as I feel like he gets a lot more involved involved in the build-up and you get a lot more out of the player this way. When you put them on getting behind, they're very one-dimensional uh, and they don't seem to do much other than running behind all the time. Obviously, that's the instruction, but it's not always the best thing. It's very predictable to play. Uh, and yeah, I think mixed attacks better as you just get a lot more out of the player. They seem to make more versatile runs and do a lot more as a result. Moving on to the central cam, guys, I just like to leave him on the default settings uh, because he has a bit of a free role in this team. He is like the creative player. So we kind of just let him do his own thing we don't really want to restrict him all that much moving on to the right cam and the left cam we have them on get into the box for cross the reason we have them on get into the box for cross is because we don't want them to be hesitant and getting into the penalty area when we are in those positions if we have them on balance crossing runs they can be a little bit static and not do all that much but if you have them on get into the box for cross they're not that hesitant to get into the penalty area and give us more options uh, but yeah that's why we have that on them moving on to the left cd the more defensive minded player we have him on stay back cover center and cut passing lanes we have him on stay back because obviously he's a defensive player we don't want him going forwards we have him on cut passing lanes so he's always looking to break up the play and intercept those passes and we also have him on cover center so he does defend those central areas moving on to the right cdm the more like box to box style player we have him on the default settings and cover center we have him on the default settings because again he's got a bit of a free role he kind of does a bit of everything attacks defense so we don't really want to restrict him. The only important thing is that we have him on cover center. So he does defend those central areas. Moving on to the left back, my more attacking fullback. We have him on balanced attack and overlap. We have him on balanced attack and overlap because we need to add extra width to the formation. The 4-2-3-1 narrow is obviously a narrow formation. The hint is in the name. Uh, so sometimes we need a wider option, which is what this fullback can bring to us. If we put him on the overlap run type, it means he's going to overlap and add that extra width. So we have players in both the narrow areas and the wide areas at the same time. Moving on to the right back, my more defensive fullback, we have him on stay back and overlap. We have him on stay back, so we always have at least three defenders back at a time. And we also have him on the overlap run type. So if we do send him on a run forward, he'll make the overlapping runs to add extra width. As for the center backs and the goalkeeper, these are on the default settings and I do not touch them. But yeah, guys, they're my custom tactics and player instructions for the 4-2-3-1. If you have enjoyed or found this useful please be sure to drop this a like sub to the channel if you are new so you never miss out on any videos like this and don't forget to turn on notifications so you are notified when a video is posted and with all that aside guys hope you have a great rest of your day and i'll catch you all in the next one